there's a huge um, number of patients who are suffering damage both from the COVID and yeah. from the COVID vaccine. Yeah. They're basically the same. Uh, yeah. it, it's called long COVID, but long COVID post-vaccine is essentially the same yeah. type of condition. It's both due to uh, abnormal immune responses to the spike protein, mm. which is part of the vaccine mm. and part of the virus that attaches mm. to the receptors uh, in the respiratory tract when you breathe in the virus. Um, now, the problem with uh, the vaccine is that uh, it distributes. It doesn't stay locally into the lymph nodes draining the skin where you inject mm. the vaccine, mm. but because it's got a very sophisticated packaging system yeah. uh, that allows it to distribute through the body and be taken up potentially into every cell, mm. you've got every cell potentially making yeah. a foreign protein. Yeah. Now, we know uh, it's it's yeah. even before Immunology 101 yeah, that yeah. if you make a foreign protein, yeah, yeah. and that's what you're trying to do to make a vaccine, yeah, you're exactly. trying to make an antibody exactly. to protect yourself. Yeah. But if that antigen, if that produced antigen from the messenger RNA from the vaccine mm. or the DNA vaccine is being made all around the body, you're going to be firing off your own immune system against yourself. Mm. It's like an autoimmune response. Yeah. And, and this is essentially the, the cause, in my view, of these protracted, immunologically mediated conditions, mm -hmm. uh, both in, in people who uh, have disseminated virus from the, uh, from the infection, which is only a small percent, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly from the vaccine, which is a much higher percent, because we know the spike protein can exist over one year yeah. it, it, systemically in, in the yeah, body yeah. and go to the brain, the heart, and yeah. other tissues and, and you are i think i think it has to be said i've been really quite significant um success treating some of these uh well, post vaccine my, I, I obviously have a much smaller practice these mm. days but my uh, i'd say about half the patients i now see yeah. have got um long COVID, at more much more from the vaccine than from mm. uh, the actual mm. infection yeah. um and on the basis of, of the science uh, that there, um, it, it, you've got a spike protein, yeah. and on the basis of the science that uh, a group in France and and America showed that uh, a drug called ivermectin mm. is the most tightly bound to the uh, spike protein. Yeah. It essentially covers up the spike yeah. protein in a you know a symbolic fashion yeah. and prevents the immune system accessing mm. it. Uh, no, so if it, if it binds to it, it, it does literally hide yeah, it, it from binds the immune system. very tightly. Yeah. It, it, that's been shown. Uh, yeah. It's been shown by at least four different mm. groups. Mm. And um, it, it, it explained the observation that uh, people were seeing looking after uh, acute COVID infection, mm. that if you treat with ivermectin, the oxygen saturation, which would normally take 10, 15 days to gradually yeah. come back to normal, yeah. it pops up to normal. Yeah. Uh, in many, many yeah. to most patients, yeah. in 24 hours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just didn't make sense and, until yeah. uh, it was shown by these two groups that uh, the ivermectin covers, if you like, the mm. spike protein yeah. uh, and prevents it agglutinating the red cells because the spike protein binds to mm. a, a, a sugar molecule mm. called glycans, uh, which brings the red cells and clumps them together. Yeah. So you can imagine you're breathing in oxygen yeah. and you want to get that into the haemoglobin of the red cells yeah. and the red cells They're are all clumped, clumped together. together. Yeah. It's blocking up the little capillaries in the lung and you can't saturate the haemoglobin. So if you take away this agglutinating yeah. clumping effect, yeah. you're going to have the oxygen getting into uh, the cells. And that just makes perfect sense in terms of pharmacodynamics, yeah. doesn't it? You yeah. can just it, see it, the way the drug would be working. It, it, uh... If anything was needed to settle any question yeah. of the effectivity yeah. of, of the use of ivermectin, yeah. uh, then that was what... I mean, even needed. I can understand, like you're taking away the glue that gums together the red cells. Exactly. So instead of having clumps of red cells blocking up these tiny capillaries in the lungs, yeah. minuscule capillaries in the lungs, yeah. uh, and in the brain there's very small capillaries, of course, but instead of blocking those up, the red cells are going through one at a time, and even then they have to squeeze to get through. Yeah. But they're, going, they're picking up the full amount of oxygen and the patient's getting oxygenated right what's right. not to like <laughs> it's yeah so you know to answer your question that on the one hand you we've got the problem of residual ongoing damage yeah uh and i think there's the the other problem is that uh, what do you do we, we still have covid mm -hmm. around uh, people are getting infected um we uh, uh we're getting a lot of information uh through the media yeah are you yeah. up to date yeah uh, and 
sadly, uh, most of these people do not understand the basic immunology, mm. that if you keep immunising somebody, I mean, I, I run into people looking at their fifth and sixth vaccine in yeah within a couple of years. Yeah. Um, it's so effective you need five doses. Well, doses. so effective. <laughs> well, well, no, no I, I think vaccination, if you look at flu, which is a good model, mm. if you have it once a year mm. uh, and you don't have it as a messenger RNA, mm. you just ground mm. up flu, mm. it, it's, it's a reasonably good vaccine. Mm. It, it prevents mm. serious disease. Mm. And I, I would never say that we didn't reduce the number of people with serious disease mm. uh, with the messenger RNA vaccines, mm. but it's got to be countered by the terrible downside of, yeah. of, of adverse events. Yeah. But if we get back to the, the issue of what people do, if, if you have five or six vaccines of anything that you breathe in, yeah. be it a virus or an, an, a, a bit of ryegrass allergen, yeah. you, you turn off the immune response. You don't turn yeah, it on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Blind Freddy can read the, yeah. the, uh, uh, the various uh, studies that are now coming out uh, including some of the big studies yeah. from America, published in yeah. in in you know, real journals, yeah. um, that uh, if you have three vaccines, you have two and a half times as many cases of the the, the infection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is the Cleveland Clinic, yeah, yeah. where they've got something like yeah. 20,000 people the, the, working for The increased them. vaccination is actually uh, yeah. reducing the body's ability. As you to... do with, with allergy shots. You yeah. go to the doctor with allergies and you want to turn off the immune response yeah. to, the, to the inhaled house dust mite. Which, or you, the, which you do want. Which you do want. Yeah. You, you have four or five injections yeah. over a relatively short yeah. time frame. So, so, so the, the, this, these multiple injections are, are allowing the body to tolerate... The HIV, the 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 the, uh, the SARS coronavirus two virus, and uh, exactly, exactly, and then we're not and, producing and that's, the immune that's, response. Yeah, al yeah. although uh, our, our wonderful newspapers don't want to pick this up, it's it actually is, um, in the medical journals. Yeah, it's there. It's, yeah, it's not. It's, there. it's not. Yeah. Sleight of hand. Yeah. 